All right, guys, so these are the metallic colors from Montana. They are part of their effects line. And as you can see, they're quite a variety of shades. And we'll just use a couple quick sampling. And for those who want to know all the colors available, I'll be sure to put a color list on the video description below. So definitely check that out. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment on the videos. Anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at all these wonderful, wonderful pieces of junk that I found at the thrift store. Uh, it looks like we got some, uh, let's see, we got a really cool ninja sword. It is Halloween, so I thought maybe we can take a look at, uh, you know, how it works on plastics and stuff. And, uh, you know, we got an ill ass mask right here, you know, a little, little eyes wide shut action, you know. Uh, <laughs> we, got a, we got this cool little Buddha guy. Um, hmm. He's really cool. Maybe I shouldn't paint him. Look, it even has someone's writing on the bottom of it right there. Yeah, you know, I think I'm gonna keep this for my desk. What do you guys think? Should we paint him or no? Yeah, I don't think so. He's, he's just too cool, he's just too cool. Check out the bottom of this, it says, To Rudy from Lee. You can't lose with a good belly. <laughs> it's true, it's true. All right, so he's getting saved, he's not getting painted. Sorry guys. Now the whole idea is we want to see how well these types of paints work on a variety of surfaces. Because remember, these are special effects paints. So if you're an artist, craftsman, uh, or you're doing cosplay or doing any kind of weird stuff like that, um, you want to have the ability to see how well it reacts with it. So we got some fabric, we got some wicker, we got some plastic, uh, we got some wood here, uh, we got this nice little Christmas ornament. I think I'll do a little GR throwy on that. And uh, you know. I think we'll have a lot of fun. We'll see how well it works. After we're done, we'll take these cans to the wall and we'll do like a little throwy or something. You guys can see how well they lay down on a flat surface because you also can use these for murals as well. So many uses. Anyways, let's go ahead and get cracking. All right guys, so before we go ahead and lay on some paint on these plastics, we're gonna use the Montana Plastic Primer. And this is a special type of coating that will help the paint adhere better to the plastic. And according to Montana, it works with a variety of different types of plastics. Um, I don't have the whole list on me right now, but chances are a common plastic you'll be using in your art will work with the primer. But check the spec sheet, of course. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and try it on these. I don't even know what type of plastics these are. This looks like it might be uh, Lexan, possibly. RC car body stuff and this looks like it might be a uh, polycarbonate or acrylic plastic I'm not sure and this is a uh, I don't know that cheap Chinese stuff that they get in here so who knows what this is but hey we're gonna give it a shot we'll see how it works so let's go ahead and get the uh, primer nice and shaken up here these come stock with the uh, calligraphy cap on them right there and these are great caps to use uh, because they create a nice even soft spray and that's what you need in projects like this. So let's go ahead and take the safety ring off here. Remember, these come with the safety ring, so pop out the safety ring like that. Get the cap on like that. Do a little quick test spray. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it goes on clear. It's just activating the paint that's on there. That's all. Um, smells a bit like acetone. Interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and start spraying it. There's a hair on there. <laughs> It says to put at least uh, two to three coats of this stuff and to allow it to dry for about three minutes between, between the coats. All right, let's go ahead and try this out. I was curious if it would make the artwork on here bleed, but it doesn't look like it's doing that. It's not reactive, that's good. All right, let's go ahead and let that sit. All right, let's go ahead and lay on this uh, bootleg transformer mask here. You guys, I just got these at the local uh, thrift store. But, you know, this could be your cosplay, your Halloween costume, whatever, whatever your fantasy, whatever you want it to be. Maybe we'll paint this a different color. All right, we'll go ahead and let that sit there. All right, guys, we got all the primer on there. I put two coats. You gotta wait three minutes between each coat, but it also says we have to wait three hours. Three hours for this to cure before we put our top coats on. So we're gonna have to do this tomorrow. Uh, so let's go ahead and let these sit overnight, and uh, why don't we just move on to the next items on the list. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with these other pieces. Now, I wanted to see how well it worked on wood, and I got this, uh, goofy little wicker basket. You know, it's this common uh, little joke that I have here is, uh, 
one of my biggest customers are little old ladies that paint their wicker furniture. So I figured we might as well give this shot, give this a shot, and see how well it sticks. You know. So we have some metallic plum here. We got this metallic plum, and it looked like it really uh, it set off nicely on this. And I was kind of curious how well it laid down. And one thing I want to mention is these come stock with those old school Euro stock tips, the ones that the Beltons used to come with, which are really hard to come by in the states. And I actually kind of like them, um, so I might be keeping these. So let's go ahead and just start laying some of this metallic on here. Now I know I'm probably going to set it down. You're going to say bad practices, PR. I know. I know. This is just to show you how it works. Now I'll start with just doing uh, some semi-light coats. These are metallics in the purest sense, so they will go on a little bit thinner than a regular uh, opaque spray paint. Uh, this probably could have helped if I used some primer on it, but I was like, eh, let's just see how well it works if someone were just to jump on in. Let's go ahead and lay some base coats in here. All right, let's let that flash for a bit. I know I'm touching it. Just, just to see, we're just seeing here, we're just seeing how it goes. <laughs> All right, while that is flashing, we're gonna go ahead and start working on these frames here. Look, look at that handsome devil right there. Look, look at that handsome devil. <laughs> That's me in uh, Hong Kong, I think. Look at that, this is how they, uh, these, uh, this scaffolding, this, they put these things like 50 stories up on these buildings and it's, uh, it's literally bamboo scaffolding held together with rope. And there are guys climbing on those things, working on buildings. It is insane. You know, when I was in Hong Kong, I saw a guy working on a, on a, on a window mounted, uh, air conditioning. And he was literally hanging out the side of a 50 story building. No rope, no support, just hanging out. It's crazy shit, man. Crazy shit. So anyways, let's go ahead and pull this frame out here. <laughs> I missed that shirt. That was a really cool shirt. Let's go ahead and set this in the office real quick. All right, let's take this apart too. Elgato. What's underneath this? Oh, check that out. Wow. Internet loves cats, don't they? Who doesn't love cats? Stupid people. That's who. Let's go ahead and take some of this metallic Tennessee here and start laying some of it in, just lightly. Remember, don't go too heavy. Metallic colors have a lot of metallic particles in them, so you don't want to lay it down too heavy first. If you want even coverage, that is. If you don't want even coverage, do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, we'll let that flash. All right, let's go ahead and start putting another coat on this while the others are drying. As you can see, this this surface has a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on. So I don't know if you'll be able to get all the paint into the cracks. And also, I think this has like a waxy coating on it. You can kind of see where it's uh, separating a little bit. Again, I didn't prep this. We're just we're just going for it, guys. But I think a few coats of the metallic purple, and uh, it'll hold up. All right, we'll let that flash for a second. Let's put the second coat on here. Oh yeah, now it's really starting to shine. It's got a beautiful metallic sheen to it. it really does. Remember, this is no prep work. I just wanted to see how it laid down.
Now that I've been, I've been kind of putting a few coats on here and you can see the paint is repelling. So I think this, I've made a, a wrong choice in material here. I think it has some type of wax coating of some sort on it because um, it definitely looks like an oil and water thing going on here. So I don't think it's the paint. I think they put some type of a wax protective coating on here that I wasn't aware of. Again, found it at a thrift store. So I guess we'll just have to call this one a failure. And uh, next time I'll try a different piece of wicker and just double make sure that it doesn't have that coating on it. Because you can already see it's uh, it's making all the paint pull up right there. So there's something on there. I don't know what it is. My guess would be some type of wax. So this one, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so the wicker didn't work out so well, but this came out beautifully. I got a really nice metallic sheen. It's got that wonderful blue hue to it. It's a uh, Tennessee, by the way, and uh, it's stuck to the surface really nicely. Uh, this is on wood. So for those of you wondering, yes, you can use it on wood and it's stuck beautifully. So let's go ahead and set this aside. I'm going to do my best to be as careful as possible here. So we got some metallic gold that I want to try on this little uh, this little mask here, you know, say say, uh, say you're going to an eyes wide shut party, like we all are off to do, and uh, you need to make a quick costume, right? Hobnob with the celebrities in their strange ways. I'm beginning to wonder if that movie was actually a documentary and not a film. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and put the first coat and let it sit. That really took quick on that first coat. That metallic gold. All right, guys, while our eyes wide shut mask is drying, we're gonna go ahead and paint this little Christmas ornament because the holidays are coming. You might wanna make a little present for your mom. Give her a little something on the holidays, homies. Hook her up, hook up the moms. She gave birth to you. <laughs> so this is a, uh, looks like a Hummel, a Hummel decoration. Hopefully it's not worth any money. Sometimes that stuff is. Uh, this is from 1990, that was the year and my friend's sister came back from college in Seattle and brought a little tape for me on Tupelo Records. A little band called Nirvana. Was it 1990? I think it was. Was it? It was before uh, Nevermind came out. I think it was 1990. Now remember, it is metallic. You'll probably, uh, probably should have done a base coat of white under it, but whatever. Just quick and dirty. Quick and dirty style just to see how it looks. All right, so let's go ahead and let that sit for a second. All right, let's go ahead and put our second coat of metallic gold on our uh, Stanley Kubrick mask here. R.I.P. Did he know too much? <laughs> is that what happened to him? Uh, wow, that looks amazing. This is a uh, polyester fabric that's been treated with a, uh, a starch type material and it really took it quite well actually. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, got a wonderful metallic sheen to it. Uh, could go well at your uh, cosplay, your uh, eyes wide shut night, or whatever it is you like to uh, do in the privacy of your own home, if you will. Let's go ahead and let that dry real quick. I might put one more coat on there, but so far it's looking really, really nice. Taking very well. All right, guys, this is the metallic rose, and it looks really nice. It's definitely like a metallic, I would say more of a metallic mauve shade. Uh, I think uh, I think it'll look really good for your ornament. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little uh, graffiti or something on this. We'll go ahead and let this dry. Uh, we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow on that one. And uh, I think that's it for today. Yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Hello guys, it's the next day and it is quite rainy out here. So we're gonna have to try to shoot what we can inside the warehouse here. But let's let's take a little, little close up of uh, what we've done so far. As you can see, the frames came out really nice. Uh, Garfield is looking pretty good right here. Look, this is a great way to make a present for your fam. Send one to your grandma, she will love it. Uh, check out the metallic right here, look at this. Yeah, it's beautiful, it doesn't come off on your finger. You know, sometimes metallics, they'll kind of rub off in your hand. This doesn't seem to do that. It's looking really, really nice. And I gotta tell you, the sheen is, it is phenomenal. It's just, it's what I've been asking Molotov to make for about 10 years and they've never done it. And uh, finally we have something now because, you know, I, I do a lot of stuff besides graffiti. I love aerosol. I like to have the tools I need to get the job done. And I finally have some decent metallics here. I just thought you guys would like to see where we're at so far with these. Let's move them aside. They do look rather nice. Look at that handsome chap. <laughs>
So it looks like the plastic primer has dried. It does have a little bit of a milky finish on the primer. So I think it might have a bit of an issue on the back painting. You know, I don't think it was really intended for back painting. Um, but I thought I'd give it a shot, see how it looked. And right now we're using metallic graphite. And uh, I just want to lay a couple real thin coats on here. With these metallic paints, if you're doing this type of effect, it's really important that you go thin, real thin. Let it dry and then put the next layer on. Don't get too happy with it. So just go ahead and set that aside there. And while that's drying, let's try this purple out on here. Give it a little bit of a sheen. All right, we'll go ahead and let that dry as well too. Yes, I am setting it down on that, but that's okay. <laughs> Just try to do this quickly here. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and try the red on this. Now, like I said before, I think this plastic primer isn't intended for underpainting because um, it does have a little bit of a milkiness to it. Maybe it'll blend out when I lay the red on top, but generally it's meant to go underneath and then the paint goes on top. You follow me? Hope so. Let's just put a few layers on here. And again, you want to go real thin, let it set, and then put the next coat. So we'll just set that there. Actually, let me do the sides here too. Okay, so that can go aside over there. Now let's try the mask out. Now this is how the primer should be used, underneath and paint on top. So I think it'll look really, really nice. And I think I want to use, let's see, metallic Caribbean or metallic ice blue. Let me see what this looks like. Hmm, it's got a nice sheen to it, but I think I'm gonna do the Caribbean. Oh yeah. I like that color. Oops. Wow, this really has that 1970s kind of look to it. I really like this a lot. All right, so we'll go ahead and let that dry. All right, so here it is when it's dried. It looks really good. It's got that nice hard shell effect to it. And uh, it really looks like an old school helmet, like, you know, old school 1970s motorcycle helmet, that nice metallic sheen. And the great thing about it too, is it doesn't rub off on your fingers. After handling it quite a bit, I've noticed that, you know, some metallics, if you touch them, they, they kind of start to peel off, but this doesn't do it. So it's very durable uh, to use as, you know, costume display, uh, helmet, artwork, whatever it is that you're doing. This sword right here, it's the same thing. It does not rub off in your fingers, which is great. Um, the effect is very good, but this type of metallics would benefit best from a base coat. As you can see here on this bowl, I would probably recommend putting a base coat of red underneath it to create a bit more of a shiny effect. The inside of this bowl is a little bit dirty. I should have cleaned it, but you can still see the metallic effect. It definitely shines beautifully. All right, guys, so this is gonna be a part one of two. Uh, it's a little bit rainy today and I won't be able to go out to the wall and paint a character and that was the whole point of this video was to finish with the character. So we'll have to make it two parts for you guys. So I'll catch you guys in the next time. But in the meantime, we did have a chance to see how these paints worked in a variety of circumstances, a variety of surfaces. And I gotta say, I really do like how well it laid down on the plastic. I really like all the colors. They all lay down pretty nicely. Uh, some were more opaque than others. I noticed the purple wasn't quite as opaque. Um, but that just might be a nature of the metallic colors. Again, these aren't meant for doing fill-ins and throwaways. These are arts and crafty type of things. And metallic paints like this tend to be thinner and more runny. Keep that in mind is the nature of these formulas. Uh, but I will tell you, some of them did cover really good. Uh, the metallic Caribbean laid down really, really thick. And, and that was really good because that was my favorite color of all. It's got that kind of retro uh, 1970s shag and wagon, uh, Japanese kind of 
you know, Japanese toys from the 70s too. You know, they have a kind of like that metallic plating color on them. Looks really, really cool. Um, so I think I'm definitely gonna be using this in some further projects. Thank you guys for watching. This is GR signing out for artprimo.com. That's artprimo.com. We're your number one source for all things art, graffiti, street art, cosplay, hobbies, crafts. I want everybody to come here. I want everyone to feel welcome. I want everyone to get down with us. So anyways, guys, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you guys soon, and I'll see you for part two. Peace.